Shalom Rastafari. Okay, this is the next part of Sukkot of the Rastafari in Gathering 2012, a preparation for Exodus. Right, this is a preparation for Exodus. So let's just kind of note that name right now, uh, Rastafari. Right, Rastafari in Gathering. Right, in Gathering 2012. Right, it's a preparation. Right, for actually sustainable if we would if, if we could put the whole thing exodus sustainable exodus so the moedims are the rehearsal and this is a very important rehearsal of yahweh eloheinu as we mentioned before these right here are the tents the tents all around and this is the holy place so this teaches us in a in a, in a big picture yahweh he loves the, the misale you understand what we call myths or metaphor you know what I'm saying? For us as their children, as you use big pictures to teach your children, so does Yahweh, so does John, so does Abba, Kedus, Kedus, Kedus. So does he uses these big pictures to explain to us as children. If we will only make our wills obedient, right, to good influences and to avoid evil, that's to show the greatest wisdom. And we've been pointing to that. Actually, we have some audios that we need to prepare right seek to prepare as soon as possible and it's going to be maybe on the 911 channel we'll have some of the audios and hopefully we'll have an opportunity you know we'll have an opportunity so here we go right here in the good news the first couple of pages of the good news actually here we go right there right to make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil therefore is to show the greatest wisdom in order to follow this aim, one must be guided by religion, right? His Majesty says, so you can see who, right? We are the Afe Negus, you know what I'm saying? The, the mouth of the king, right? Um, use it as, with that zealously, zealousness like Phineas, right? He says, progress without, right? Progress without what? Religion. Remember religion, Hymenote, we break that down. We explain what that is. Progress without religion, Hymenote, is just like a life surrounded by unknown perils and can be compared to a body without a soul. It is only when the human mind is guided by religion or true religion, hymenote and morality, that man can acquire the necessary vision to put all his ingenious inventions and contrivances to really useful and beneficial purposes. Now, a lot of the brothers and sisters have certain gifts, have certain callings. You understand? And some think that because one has the gift and the calling, that means that they're ready for ministry. No. Yeah, or think that they're going to use them. No. No, no. We must be about the good news. We must be about saving, saving souls. Well, really not us saving souls, but the, the, the saving word is save souls. It's so very important because what we're missing is each other. You understand? That's what we're missing. We're missing each other. Right, so he's seeking to speak to us individually. Now, on religion and spirituality, we also have from the good news where his majesty says very clearly that the temple of the Most High begins with the human body, which houses our life, essence of our existence, speaking of our, of our soul and our spirit. Africans are in bondage. You see that word right there, bondage today, because they what? approach spirituality through religion provided by foreign, foreign invaders and conquerors. We must stop confusing religion and spirituality. Religion is a set of rules, regulations, and rituals created by humans which were supposed to help people grow spiritually. This is our stance on spirituality and religion, and it's all based on the good news of his imperial majesty, our Godfather and King of Kings. So let's understand that as we move forward, because the very otherwise folks confuse you. We need re religion, as we have been teaching, is the outer shell of spirituality. So when we speak about the, the, the number five and grace, and we speak about that one must first hear the word, shema the word, one must we must read the word like the Bereans in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 11. Right, to see whether these things, Negaru, in the Zihu, Yohonen, 
you know, it was, it was, is the thing like this? Is the matter really like this? When you hear I and I or anyone speak concerning God, the Bible, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, you have to check it out for yourself. You know, you've got to search these things, take notes of these things, look these things up for yourself, brothers and sisters. All right? So we speak about, like, for example, the five-fold way that to hear the word, to read the word, right, to study the word, to, to memorize the word, and then to meditate reflect, you know what I'm saying, upon the word, to meditate. You cannot meditate without that, a foundation there. It's like we speak of the fivefold, um, you know, the fivefold order of the church. You know what I'm saying, the foundation is faith. And then in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42, it gives you the other four. You know what I'm saying, look it up, brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying, this is very important. So as we even put that forward, that is more or less, kind of religious on a certain level, you know what I'm saying, because it's basically some rules or some steps that are supposed to help ones in the unfoldment of the true tabernacle, you know what I'm saying, the true tabernacle. So this also touches on the Sukkot and the Sukkahs, right, because the tabernacle is used as a metaphor for man and for our life in this world, like uh, a sister just mentioned that, she had some close people to her, you know, saying just pass away suddenly. The scripture says that it's like a tabernacle. Our bodies, our lives in this world is like a tabernacle. You know what I'm saying? So this is also part of Sukkot, right? Overstanding Sukkot. Now, in the messianic era, right, we have to understand there is a reference to um, Sukkot or what's called ingather, right? Ingathering or the atid lavo. Right, this ingathering, the millennium, the Sukkot. Let's understand this, brothers and sisters. Right now, as we mentioned before, and we'll just mention here again, not to really regurgitate those matters right here and now, but ones can actually go to, um, they can actually go to the Rastafari Sabbatico, as we've been mentioning before, the Rastafari Sabbatico. And when they get to the Rastafari Sabbatical, there's this vid right here, Rastafari Spirituality, Worship and Honoring the King, John Millennial Kingdom, Zechariah 14, verses uh, 16 to 21. So these are the verses speaking about the Millennial Sukkot. You know what I'm saying? The Millennial Sukkot. Sukkot, actually, Sukkot, many Sukkawoj. Now, in the process of us, you know, just gathering some basic information, seeing that, you know, Sukkot actually begins this evening, we thought that it would be in proper order, right? It would be in proper order. Let's go to this page right here, Sukkot 2012, that it would be in proper order, you understand, to um, do a brief presentation. And the Holy Spirit reminded us, actually, of the Rastafari spirituality that's on Rastafari Sabbatica. So check that particular vid out as well. It goes into part of the millennial aspects of it in um, Zechariah, Zacharias, Tindvites, Zacharias, chapter, chapter um, 14, verses 16 to 21. So we're not going to go into details, those details again right here, because those details are already there. You know what I'm saying? So ones can actually check out those details in the particular vid that we are pointing out. Because we're going to try to be as brief as possible, you know what I'm saying, to give ones and ones some updates, you know what I'm saying, because um, to whom more is given, more is required. So there's other things that we have to also accomplish in this ministry, both in, in the personal, in, in the private interest, as well as the, 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 the common interest. And this right here is in the best interest of the common interest and the community, the common unity in the King of Kings and his Christ. So we actually also point out this on the Internet that one should check out on the Wikipedia, going to that Wikipedia page right here. And, and I was just scrolling over it because they've been updating it, very interesting update. They've been updating it, and you can get some of the history you understand, don't, you know, get past the veil of the flesh. You understand, the veil of the flesh. Let's, let's learn these things, study. Let's remember what the Bereans said in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 11. Negru and the Zihu, Yohanan, 
And what they did, they studied and searched out the scriptures. This is the preparation. So here we have Kol Ma'od, right? And then the Hakel, and then... Now, you see the Simchat, the Simchat, uh, okay, the Sim, oh, actually it's the Shemeni at Eret, right? The Shemeni at Eret. And we notice an interesting um, something that was written, what was written right here. And it was speaking about in the um, tabernacle days when the temple of Jerusalem was still standing. And, okay, here's the Hakka, right, the Hakka, right, the Hakka right there. In the days of the temple in Jerusalem, I don't know if you can really see this too well right there, but it's this um, passage right here, right, in this passage right here. We can actually change the screen orientation. But just hear this, because this is what we read. We went over the page. We've seen the page before. We made reference to it. But um, they're always updating, class all. They have all those Falasha, Beit Israel books that they keep from the Falasha, so they should be updated and they should be getting better, right? In the days, but some still are bitter, you know what I'm saying? In the days of the temple in Jerusalem, all Jewish, really, this would be Beit Israel. Now, come on now, Beit Israel, all Israelites, men and women and children, right, on pilgrimage to Jerusalem, for the festival would gather in the temple courtyard, right, would gather in the temple courtyard, like we kind of gather in the Ethiopian world net, that's like an outer court, like a temple courtyard, right? Um, the temple courtyard on the first day of the Chol Ha Mo'od Sukkot, right, to hear, they said the Jewish king, right, over here they, they point out the Jewish king. It's not the Jewish king. It, 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 it's, it's, it's the king of kings. It's Moa and Bess is the Im Negeta Yehuda. I want you to understand, Sukkot is the boots. In other words, it's a memorial for how the Israelites went through the wilderness, right? How, how they dwelt in the wilderness. And so the Jewish king would read sections from the Torah. Now, this ceremony was, which was mandated in um, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 10 to 13. Remember, this is what we were talking on. Look at the previous um, Torah portion video, the RSS 52 and 52.1, right? It was held every seven years. In the following, in the year following the um, um, Semitah, the Shemitah, which is the sabbatical year where all debts are canceled, right? Where all debts are canceled, right? Now, um, our Jewish brothers and cousins, they could do this, and they should do this before it's too late. But anyway, this ceremony was discontinued after the destruction of the temple, right? But it was revived in Israel on a smaller scale. But let's look at the truth, right? Here's, here's the truth. We looked up right here. We looked up Selassie. The Holy Spirit said, look up Selassie and Tent, right? Let's bring this out. Look up Selassie and, and Tent. And so we looked up Selassie and Tent, and we saw this site right here, right? We saw this site right here. Hila Selassie on throne in tent, most likely a field installation for the ceremonial opening of the, what's that, the Ecole de Guerra Hila Selassie first. I guess the military academy ones would say, right? Now, this is very interesting, Hila Selassie and tent. And, and this is the Ethiopian tradition because Ethiopians are, are of the Beta Israel. You understand? Amos 9-11. All right? Amos 9-11. Don't forget Ethiopian World Net 9-11, the YouTube channel as well, brothers and sisters. But here, let's click on here. This is the picture that came up. What a beautiful picture. You see, this is, this is, this is Sukkot. This is the original Sukkot. Gathering to hear the, the true Jewish king, the true king of kings of Ethiopia. A beautiful picture right here. All right, now that's, this is what had actually reminded, right, this is, this, is, this is actually what reminded I and I, right, right, this is actually what reminded I and I, all right, um, seems like the, something's going on, but the picture is going to be still right here. It seems like the camera's going through one of its, um, um, let's see if we can, okay, you can see that right here. It's going through one of its uh, stranger moves. So here's the king of kings, right? Here, here is Nagusa Nagash. You probably don't see that either. So it's on a still right now. The camera is on a, 
is on the still. So it's kind of still this frame. This frame has captured it. And you understand has captured it. Huh? And yeah, the audio might have gone out as well. So um, 